Will I ever get married? Should we move in together? How can I focus on God while dating? Why do I feel so alone? Are looks really that important? Is sex really such a big deal? You may have a lot of questions about your walk with God. So let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to another Lamore in Christ video. I'm Kaitia Lamore and today I'm going to be sharing with you a clip from my recent live podcast with my sister Circle of Christ. When they contacted me a few months ago, I started listening to some of their podcasts and I was like, this is really legit. This is spirit-filled, Bible-based, like legitimate podcasts. And some of their speakers, I'm just like, like wow, like these people are making moves and they are shining their light bright for the kingdom of God. And after talking to them about possible topics that I would be talking about, what stuck was raising kingdom-minded children. I've been asked before, how do I incorporate my faith into my daughter's life to let her know that we have a savior, we have a God that we serve, we wanna walk in love and compassion and peace, we wanna read the Bible. So part of that is just walking out my life before her, but also letting her know this is why we pray. This is what we're praying for. This is what we pray against. And just letting her know that this is a normal part of life. I don't want her to grow up and just say like, oh, now that I'm 13, all these new things are coming on me. Now I got to know about prayer and now I got to know about fighting, you know, spiritual battles and stuff. I want her to know that this is a regular part. I don't want her to be afraid or intimidated by it, but to know that the mighty God we serve is going to help us through any and every situation that we face and that every good thing comes from him. So I'm going to share a 10 minute clip. I talked for about I think it was about 30 minutes and then I, they had a Q&A. So I'm linking below the full episode, but this is just to give you a little teaser. I feel like when I hear myself over the phone that I sound like I'm five. My mom and my husband said that's not the case, but they hear me on the phone, so it's normal to them. But me hearing my voice over the phone because it was a live call-in conference call kind of thing is like, ah, that sounds weird. But the message that I put forth, God really helped me with all the scriptures and with providing testimonies in my life life and sharing where my wisdom even comes from and how I learned about being a mother, which is God and my mom. She's been a great example to me. So without further ado, let us get into the snippet, the 10 minute teaser lesson right now. With them. I don't think parents and kids should just be friends like, oh, we're just best friends and that's it. No, you need parents. You need people to raise you up and to guide you. But they should also have that open policy of communication where you feel okay telling them, hey, mom, guess what I did? Like, it wasn't good. Or like, hey, I need your help with something. I never, ever felt scared to go to my mom and say, hey, this is what's going on at school, or this is what I did, or I'm even thinking about this. Like, she made sure, even if she may have felt a certain way on the inside, her face, though, always looked like, I'm here, I'm listening, I'm your mother, like, go ahead. <laughs> and so that made me feel really great about my relationship with her and as I'm growing older I can tell her hey this is going on in my marriage or hey sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing with this child like can you help me like is this the right thing to do and she'll continue to back me up and say these are the things that you're doing well these are the things that are going right don't even worry about this this is just a phase but that support and that encouragement and that wise instruction and seeing what her walk was like and the answers, answered prayers, and the growth, and seeing her fasting, and reading her Bible, like, it was just so normal to me. So something that um, she also did for us was our gifts that we had, and our talents that we had, she really encouraged them as we were kids. Like, I, I used to, and this is still, like, how I am now, like, when I was a child, in my mother's room, I would put on her lipstick, I would put on her longest dress, I would stand up on something, and I would be like, I am in the spotlight. Like, I am in the greatest play ever, like, listen to me sing. Like, I wasn't so much like that in public, but in private, though, at home. Like, I just knew I would be a storyteller. I would read, like, so many books. We'd go to the library and just fill up our little red wagon full of books, and we were just always consuming knowledge and singing together, and she didn't shy away from, like, oh, I'm a mom now, can't have a career, you know, can't do what I want. Like, she was still a working mother and still helped us with homework. There was a season where she was a single mom until she got remarried. So, But no matter what, I never saw her say, my life is over, now you guys go. Like, I got to be able to see she's in a play, 
she's singing, you know, I hear her, her stuff on the radio. Like it just made me feel like what I want to do is not just for like from when I'm 22 to 26 and then I get married and it stops. Like this is for long term what God wants me to do. And that's why when people tell me even now, like you guys were saying, the industry is crazy. Like I admit it. <laughs> I'm not blind. I see what's going on, but I also know that there are so many mission fields that God has called us to. I may not be going to another country, you know, trying not to get martyred in order to share the gospel, but I may be in Hollywood. I may be going to set. I'm not going to do things that compromise my faith, but I have definitely shared the gospel with people when I've been on set at movies, TV shows, music videos. Like, I made sure, like, God, if there's a... A divine appointment here like let me know like to share with people but I just feel like it's another job it's another career and if you want to talk about corruption the world is corrupt there is no safe spot even within the church there's a lot of things happening in the church unfortunately so we just have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt what has God called us to do specifically and to do that prayerfully and to do that boldly and to understand our spiritual gifts like even me speaking today and and being in ministry, I didn't really know that was a thing in my life. I knew that I'd be speaking, you know, my lines in movies or whatever, but doing what I'm doing now sparked from years ago in 2008, blogging and starting to write about my testimonies, like what has God done in my life? And people would go on and I would see them at church and they're like, I read your blog about this and it really helped me. And I'm like, what? I'm just sharing what God has done for me. So me just being like a storyteller and, and an evangelist, like that's been a gift for me. And now it's on YouTube. And my mom has encouraged me every step of the way. Like, hey, people see the hope that you have. Like, get ready to tell your testimony. Get ready to share that with people. They need that hope. What are we seeing in media? Not God. Not a lot of it. So we need, God needs to raise people up who are willing to say, hey, this is what God called family to be. This is how it works. This is what's going on in my life. No, it's not perfect. But do I have peace? Yes. Do I have faith? Yes. Would it be a lot harder without him? Oh, yes. But I know that with my walk with God, how important that is. And that's why for my day-to-day life, our family always prays together in the morning. We read the Bible. Since my daughter was a newborn, we well, before she was a newborn, me and my husband, we've always prayed and read the Bible before we go to sleep. And so that's just been something we do every night. So once she was born, then she just, she attended because she had to. She came to our Bible studies because she didn't have a choice. But it's just like amazing that I wasn't really thinking about it back then, but you're literally washing this baby in the Word and praying over her and making sure that they know like this is second nature. And I want to tell you guys like a really cute little anecdote really fast because my, my daughter is very bold in the Lord and just as a person. But we were at Ikea one day, and there's all these little bedroom setups that they have, like, hey, buy this bunk bed. So in one of these rooms, there was a bed, and they had, like, some books as props. And my daughter was playing in in the bedroom set, and a little girl came in. And my daughter was like, hey, we're getting ready to go to bed. Like, we're pretending. Well, we got to read the Bible first. So she has a little prop book, and she's like, we have to read the Bible, and we have to pray, and then we go to sleep. And the father of the other little girl, he was just like, wow, like, yes, like I'm so glad you do that with her. And she knows, like, she's not scared to say, this is normal life to me. I read the Bible because I'm in bed, I'm about to go to sleep, and we pray. Like, we have to make sure that God is a part of our everyday life. So I want that to be so ingrained in her so that when she is older and she's out with friends or she gets married and does her own thing, like, this is her foundation, this is her basis. She's going to see the relationship that me and my husband have. And we're going to be keeping God at the center of it. She's going to know, like, oh, Bradley asked me out to date, but Bradley don't pray. Like, she's not going to go and date Bradley or whatever. She's going to know, like, wow, this guy asked me to church. He's legit in what he's believing. He's not posting crazy stuff on social media or whatever. New thing will be invented when she's of age to date. So she's going to understand, like, that don't look right. That is that is not okay. And we'll have discussions even after we watch a TV show like or a movie, and she'll be like, why is that 
character doing that? I'm like, well, because they don't know Jesus, but also, like, this is why certain people do certain things, because kids don't understand sometimes, like, why people are mean or why they don't want to play with her or why certain things happen in movies, like, but to be able to explain that to her and bring it back to God, that's something that's important to me, because when she's older, I want her to know, hey, if I have an issue... Yes, I can talk to my mom, but I can also go to the Bible. What does the Bible say? And she's going to know, okay, there's good, there's bad, there's evil, there's angels and demons. And even talking about the spiritual realm, I posted this on Instagram today. Like, there are a lot of kids that even with their parents being Christians, the parents are so afraid to talk about the spiritual realm because it can seem very scary. However, how many of those same kids are going to watch movies that have witchcraft, that are casting spells, that have magic? So the world is already teaching them about the spiritual realm. We know there's witchcraft. We know there's spells. We know there's those things. But are we willing to teach our kids this is how you prepare to fight against it? So we'll be just very straightforward with Petra. That's our daughter's name. We'll be very straightforward with her like, hey, this person – has an attitude or the ambulance just went by or that person's living on the street, we need to pray for them. And this is why they might be on the street. This is what type of prayer you would lift up for them. Or like, oh, you're having a really hard time today, that you're controlling your emotions. So almost daily, we have to talk to her about you need to pray over your body and over your emotions and understand we walk in love. We walk in compassion. Look, the enemy doesn't want us to be a family. Like, I'm just saying, the enemy wants to destroy family. He doesn't want us to be nice to each other. He doesn't want us to love each other. So let's make sure we pray for unity. And before your father gets home, because sometimes um, when Jarrell, my husband, gets home from work, it's just like, oh, I don't have mommy all to myself. So she immediately gets like an attitude and gets sad about it. So I'm just like, you know what? Your daddy works very hard. And he's coming home because he loves us. He doesn't ever have to come home if he didn't want to. He's choosing to come home. So we need to pray for him to be safe coming home. We need to pray over our attitudes. And when he comes in, ask him about his day. Tell him you love him and you miss him. Because kids in their in their born state, they are not righteous. They're not holy. They're not sanctified. Like that's something we have to teach them about. And when they're of age, they will accept Jesus and they will get baptized and stuff like that. But until then, they need to understand. It's not just like <laughs> like telling them, like, stop being stank. Like, don't do that anymore. But, like, what are the reasons behind it? And praying for God to help you to know, like, God, who am I raising? Who is this kid? Like, because Petra, we already are starting to see her spiritual gifts. But if it wasn't for my mom even saying that, because my mom has had very strong spiritual gifts since she was a child, so... She would tell me, like, hey, that stuff shows up immediately, like discernment or prophecy or anything that that God has you um, gifted with. That shows up very early on. So watch for that. All right, so you guys heard 10 minutes of it. Does that make you want to hear more? Do you want to hear what questions were asked? There were some really good questions asked, and we had a really great conversation, some girl talk afterwards. So you can listen to the rest of this. You can pull up their SoundCloud, go to the link, check out my episode, and just drive in the car or sit in the bathtub or, like, whatever it is. So I hope that you listen to the rest of it and that you really got something out of it. But before we leave, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you're desiring a spouse, if you're desiring a family, just understand what a great privilege it is, but also a great responsibility. And this is your ministry. This is your mission field, your family. You're creating a whole new legacy. And if you're feeling like there's no way anything good could come out of my family, there's no way that I could know how to raise my kids up to think about Jesus. There's no way it's going to be so hard for me. There's a lot of people who are afraid of starting families. This is a genuine fear that people have because they're like, I'm going to screw it up my kids are going to be like this but I'm telling you God will guide you and if you don't have family to help you out you can pray God send the right people send the right mentors spiritual advisors community pastor the right people to pour into you so that you can have confidence that the way God created family to be can be for you too but I do want to pray for that I did pray on the podcast but in case you don't listen to the full thing you know I like to pray over you guys so let's pray about family right now 
Lord God, I just thank you that you want what's very best for us. You are here to give us your blessings. And part of your blessings is family. There's people who are afraid to start a family due to child loss, miscarriage, or seeing the wrong examples in their parents and just being afraid and like there's no way I could take on that responsibility or like what is my life gonna turn into? I have this amazing career, I have this lifestyle of travel, I couldn't incorporate a child into it, but I just pray that you put it on their heart. If they're desiring this, that you'll put on their heart when and how and who it is that they'll be building this family with. I know that you have in mind already who our spouse can be because you know how they'll complement our purpose and our calling and be there for us and be submitting the relationship to God. So just praying that you will raise up your families, Lord God, and help them to be doing the things to prepare themselves so that it's not such a shocker, so that it's not such a hard transition, Lord God. So I just pray that you help them ease their fears, help them to know that you are with them and you will carry them through this new chapter and help them to have that budding excitement for if they are ready, if it's supposed to be happening soon, help them to have that excitement. And if it's not for a far off many years, that you'll just help them to to keep it in the back of their mind, what do they need to be doing now in order to get to that place the best way that they can. So I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the legacies that you're building within these people. I thank you for their calling and their purpose and who they are in Christ. I thank you that they're even watching this because if they saw the title and they clicked on it, they're thinking about it too. So please just renew their hearts and renew their minds to be drawing closer to you. And I pray all this in your son Jesus' name, amen. So that is what I wanted to pray for you and that's all I have for today. And don't forget to check out My Sister Circle of Christ. I will include a link to their app. They feature different praise and worship. They feature different authors who are putting books out there. They feature different lessons. I'm actually on there, you can find me. They have Instagram, they have their podcast, they have all kinds of good stuff on their app, so check them out. If you like topics like faith, Bible studies, and getting deeper into the Word of God, I'm gonna be doing that every Sunday here. So don't forget to subscribe and also turn your notifications on and if you want to support this ministry I do have my own apparel that I created that you can click the link below and see I'm wearing one of them right now but you can't really see it but anyways um, you can do that or you can donate to my PayPal I have a secure link below if you want to send a donation of any amount and if you just want to pray for me if you just want to leave a kind comment I appreciate that too so thank you for being here today and I will see you in my next video bye hi I don't wear glasses on camera uh, audio check Audio check, please. And don't forget to tell them that I sent you. And don't forget to tell them that I sent you. And don't forget to tell them that I sent you. Lamore in Christ now has apparel. Please check the description box for more information on how to purchase. If you like what you see here, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out our previous uploads. See you next time.